A pleiotropy can be thought of as one genotype, multiple phenotypes. In an antagonistic pleiotropy, you have one genotype and multiple phenotypes, but those multiple phenotypes are seen in different environments. In fact, not only that, but those multiple phenotypes are antagonistic to each other in the sense that in one environment, the phenotype will display a high fitness or functionality, whereas in another environment, the phenotype will display a low fitness or functionality. In a sense, this is a little bit like conditional mutations. Uh, it is seen in the con with, with um, the aging literature with the uh, concept that uh, we have alleles that provide us with early life or earlier life uh, high levels of fitness, but at the cost of lower fitness later in life or lower functionality later in life. Uh, it is also seen in the evolution of um, virulence literature where you have the, uh, or, or actually serial passage literature generally, where you have the evolution of special specialization to functionality within one environment that comes at the cost of functionality in a different environment. This is seen, for example, in the generation of attenuated vaccines where uh, passage through one environment results in adaptation to that environment and a resulting reduction in adaptation to another environment, such as while infecting ourselves. So what you see here is an allele that, in fact, is displaying uh, antagonistic pleiotropy. So the wild type allele, again, is this um, this little a allele and the allele we're focusing on is this mutation that's given rise to an increase in fitness in environment number one but there is a corresponding decrease in fitness in environment number two uh, that is antagonistic pleiotropy more than one phenotype although they are seen at different times associated with one genotype uh, and in fact, one of these phenotypes displays a higher level of fitness or results in a higher level of fitness and the other results in a lower level of fitness.